seventh straight year that I've been here. It's a beautiful day. It's great competition, and there's a lot at stake today, um, as there often is on this day. But we're uh, vying for a share of the Interact crown, and, and Penn Charter certainly wants to get in our way. Um, yeah. Both teams have had a great year, and uh, we're both excited. As you just mentioned, Germantown Academy wins here today. They've got a share of the Interact crown with Malvern Prep. And introduce Matt Dents. You know Matt very well as the head coach of this program. What do you got to say about the head man for GA? Well, the head man for GA has made a genuine difference in the quality of the football program uh, at Germantown Academy. He's really turned things, he's turned things around. And not just that, has he, he's been a great football coach, but he's a great school person as well. And. Uh, we're really happy that he's with us. And, and another guy you're really happy to have as part of the GA program is Kyle McCloskey, as we spotlight him, the yeah. quarterback for this Germantown Academy squad, going to play at Villanova next year. He You've is. had a chance to teach him. I'm sure you have great things to say about him. Big number seven, I'll tell you. He, he's a, a very good uh, athlete, a great quarterback, a, re, a genuine leader here, and he's, he's um, a terrific student. I taught him two years ago, and he... Uh, he was in the classroom, he was a positive force just like he is out on the gridiron. And, and I'm really proud of him because he's a terrific guy, comes from a great family. Well, we have two of the best quarterbacks that you're going to see here in the Interact. In the Interact, uh, right. Michael Matkowski on the other yeah. side, one of the best that you're going to see. But Kyle McCloskey, yeah. one of the best in GA history as well. So at halftime, the score is 0-0 zero to zero here between the Patriots and the Quakers. He's going to run, hits the hole on the right side. He dives to the end zone. Touchdown. Netkowski looks. He fires deep down the field. He's looking for Tucker. It's caught by Tucker. And he escapes three Germantown Academy players inside the 10. And he's pushed out inside the 5. A whirlwind of emotions on that one play. The biggest of the game for Penn Charter, and the Quakers are knocking on the door. Receiver, another bunch looking formation. It's a pitch to Sadie. He's got a hole. He is in for the touchdown. 30th installment of GAPC Day. McCloskey on first down, throws. He completes. He's got a man wide open down the middle. Touchdown, Patriots. Mike Riley. Netkowski evades pressure. Throws on the run, completes to Say D across midfield. Say D turns on the Jets. He's still on his feet inside the 20. Touchdown, Penn Charter. Oh, man. Or do you send out Vince Capone right now? And you saw a little pat of the head for Vince Capone as he steps out onto the field for a chance to win the Interact for his football team. The senior with the biggest moment of his football career so far. The holder will be Mike Riley. The kick is up, the kick is good! Vince Capone knocks it through, and GA takes a 17 to 14 lead with 2.4 seconds remaining. And that is gonna do it! GA wins, they are Interact champions! 17 to 14 final. They pull it out in fine fashion. And we welcome you here to Cary Stadium in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania for GAPC Day. And we will uh, turn you over to the PA announcer for the Senior Day festivities here.
Congratulations, number 11, Matt Brittingham and his pals, and alongside Jim Fennerty and we'll join you in just a couple of moments to talk about the storylines of this one. Always good storylines between GA and PC. And as the seniors at midfield. We ask you to stand and remove your caps now we got the national anthem. So we will let the national anthem play. Windy day here from Fort Washington. Honor our country here on a beautiful fall afternoon from Fort Washington. And GA will take the field as well as Penn Charter after the national anthem. And we will begin the festivities here on the broadcast. Thank you. 
man's early light What so proudly we held At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the Beautiful rendition of the national anthem to get us set for GAPC Day. Simon Rosenwasser and Jim Fennerty. Jim, we settled in. We ready to go. We had a long girls soccer game that ended in a tie. But now we've got football on the docket to finish us up here. Beautiful day. Beautiful day for it. Uh, we also uh, were, were given the names of the uh, most valuable players in the girls soccer game. They are Germantown Academy's Riley Axenroth and Penn Charter's Emma Malley. Both fitting tribute to both of the two young ladies. Yeah, so it was a very tightly contested game, Jim. We had the win play a huge factor in that soccer game. Obviously, it's uh, going to be a factor in a soccer game when you, you use the ball to get the ball forward. A little bit different in football, but even though there's some hesitation and stoppages between each play the wind still does play a factor what are your thoughts on on how the on how mother nature will will factor into this contest oftentimes the football coaches will tell you when the when the wind is like this that the one area that they're really concerned about are special teams uh, the idea of punting specifically getting up in that wind uh, you would also think that uh, both teams although both teams rely on the run uh, GA has a tendency to want to throw the ball a little bit more with Maddie Brittingham uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Let's take a look at the standings here in the Interact to put this game into context. And Germantown Academy and Penn Charter, though they will not be playing for the Interact Championship as was the case in 2016. Look at Malvern Prep, 10 and 0 in the in 10 and 0 overall, 4 and 0 in the Interact. Impressive records for the Friars. Penn Charter coming in in second at 3-1, so they still do have an outside chance uh, if Malvern can get some uh, Germantown Academy, or Penn Charter can get help from Springside Chestnut Hill Academy, who plays Malvern here today. But uh, here are the standings. Germantown Academy coming behind those two teams, but doesn't matter, Jim, right? This is GAPC day. doesn't matter what happens in the standings. doesn't matter what happens as long as you get a win on GAPC Day, it's a successful season or so they say. You get all the rivalries uh, going back to Army, Navy and everything else, but GAPC, that's what the, the, the two teams and the fans and the alumni, uh, they, that's what they look to to a successful season. Uh, when I first started coaching here in basketball, they told me just make sure you beat Penn Charter twice. So uh, <laughs> we, we tried to do that in hoops, and I know Coach Dents and his guys are trying to do that today. So it'll be a very good game. One of the oldest rivalries. It's got to be pretty cool to be a part of these communities when, you know, it's been going on for so long. And just the way that we've seen people come out for this event, the excitement that it brings, it seems like it's going to be going on for another 132 years, right? Let's hope so. Let's hope so. And it's uh, – it's very interesting because, as we said in, in the girls' soccer game, the boys know each other. They play against each other growing up. Um, the coaches, Tommy Coyle with Penn Charter and Matt Dents with GA, are both old father judge teammates and, 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 uh, and, and very good friends. So uh, it, they, com they come out here and they're going to compete um, very, very intensely. And then when the game's over, they're still friends. So it's a, good, it's a terrific rivalry. Before they kick off, we're going to uh, – to highlight a couple of the players on each team and, and look at our players to watch. We've got some good players 
uh, coming for each team, and we're going to focus on the running backs for both squads. Ed D for Penn Charter. He had a phenomenal game a couple years ago. What a season for, for Penn Charter's Ed D, and what a career as he's now the all-time leading rusher at Penn Charter. 20 total touchdowns this year, 15 rushing touchdowns for Ed D. Trey Vance, he kind of had his breakout in this GAPC game back in 2016, and he's been the model of consistency. Six 100-yard games this season, and the junior is sure to play a key role for Germantown Academy today. It will be Trey Vance and GA to receive the opening half kickoff. The wind, if you're curious, will be blowing in GA's face here in this first quarter. And we will be mentioning the wind because it's been that impactful so far to the festivities. It certainly was in the the girls, football, uh, the girls soccer game, and we expect Mother Nature to play a role here. Here's GA with uh, the opening kick. It's Timmy Ruth who receives, and here comes the offense for Germantown Academy led by Matt Brittingham. Germantown Academy, the big story this year. Jordan Longino was the starting quarterback. He went down with injury, and now uh, uh, Kyle Brittingham uh, is, has stepped in. Matt, it's Matt Brittingham, sorry about that. Matt Brittingham has stepped in and uh, done, a, done a nice job. And here he takes the snap, bobbles it, and will be forced to run. A flag comes in as the tackle is made by Pan Charter's Muhammad Harris. Matt Brittingham is one of those great stories. He's a terrific baseball player, the third baseman on the baseball team, and was the backup quarterback. And, and when Jordan uh, Jordan Longino got hurt, Matty's done a terrific job filling in and, and, and really has, has left his mark on GA football history. So Matt, who would have been taken down for a two-yard loss, will get another chance at a first down. It'll be first and seven after the... Spot foul brings them a little bit closer. So this drive will start at the 25. Trey Vance in the backfield. Man in motion and the handoff to Vance. Good burst of speed up the middle. And Vance is taken down by Matthew Marshall of Penn Charter, among a few others for the Quakers. And quickly to the line goes Birdingham and GA. Hurry up offense to start here. Though at the line, Birmingham making some adjustments. Trey Vance has started this game and needing only 16 yards to get that coveted 1,000 yard record. Maybe only seven away now after a nice run on first down. He gets it again here. Little stutter step and across the 35, a gain of three. 5'9", 190 pound junior. He's been really impressive, Jim. He has been. Trey's had a terrific year. He's a great young man, and, and he really is, has, uh, has really broken out this year and, and proven the kind of, to be the kind of football player we all know he could be. Especially last year. It was a frustrating year for Vance. Injuries galore kept him off the field. And he kept his head up and got his opportunity here in his senior year to turn some heads. And here he goes up the left side. Still on his feet, right at that first down marker. He might be marked just short. But Trey Vance with some good tough running will give Penn Char or give Germantown Academy at the very least a manageable third down. They're gonna grant him the first down on that second down run. So first and ten coming up for GEA, coached by Matt Dents in his seventh season. A lot of relationship between Penn Charter's coaching staff and GA's coaching staff. Both coaches went to Father Judge High School. Little end around here. And coming in to... That's Lacey Snowden. Yep, Lacey Snowden on the carry. And he gains about a yard. Penn Charter sniffs it out well. It'll be interesting with this win going against the wind. One of GA's strengths this year has been those three big linemen up front. Elijah Roten, who's headed for Duke, Justin Waja, and Avery Samuel. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see if GA r runs behind those three big guys. 
Yeah, interesting notes about the offensive line as Brittingham fakes the handoff and then throws incomplete intended for Vance. You mentioned Wajda and Rote. Those two are, are playing the tackle positions, the, the end of, of the line uh, on either side. And those two players have started 40 games in their four-year high school careers. Just incredible. From freshman all the way through senior year, you've had the same tackles on the line for GA. That is a blessing. As they try to set up a screen to Snowden, and he's going to get minimal yardage on third down. Good play by Wayne Durkach on the stop. It'll bring up a fourth down, and GA will be forced to punt. But I was talking to Matt Dents about this, and I mean, you talk about what it, what you need to have a good football team. Yeah, everybody wants to have a good running back. Everybody wants to have a good receiver. But if you can have a steady, consistent offensive line you can rely on, that's that's almost equally, if not more, important. Oh, uh, it's criti it's critical to success, especially in, in the high school game. But um, Justin Wadjuk came in as a, as a relatively slender lineman and. Uh, just the other day, he was telling me that he said, please make sure that you give credit to the athletic trainers because he said, I've gained 100 pounds over my four years there. Right. And I said, well, I, I feel like I've gained that 100 with you, so yeah. it's okay. But no, they're great guys, and, <laughs> and they, uh, you know, Matt, Matty's been, been blessed, and he, uh, he's done a great job in their development. And not to mention Avery Samuels, who's done a good job as well. Sean, Absolutely. Sean Spinoza is the young offensive lineman who uh, is looking to become the next Wajda and wrote for, for Germantown Academy. As Penn Charter now has the football and a little shoving after this play. We expect it to be physical. Did we see a flag come out here? I'm not sure. I think I might just let this one go. But uh, we expect these two teams to, to want to beat the other, right? We, we don't want to see any extracurricular activities, and hopefully it just... They leave it to the competition on the that's, field. That's it. That's 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 what that's what we all want. So the quarterback and Kyle Jones and GA stacks him up. It's actually. That is Kyle Jones, the quarterback and. He's stacked up, so third and long, third and nine. Everybody uh, everybody knew about Edward Sadie, the Temple-bound running back for Penn Charter. He's had a terrific career, uh, but Coach Coyle really wanted to praise uh, the, the development of Kyle Jones as quarterback. He thought he really has improved throughout the entire season. Yeah, he could pass, he could run. He ran for 156 yards against Episcopal. So this is a quarterback that can beat you in a couple of different ways. And with conditions such as these, when the wind's going to play a factor, we expect him to use his legs. Here he is throwing, and that ball sails over the head of Aaron Mayone. And a quick three and out for Penn Charter. 7.19 to go in the first quarter. It's GAPC Day live here on the Play-by-Play -play Sports Network. Simon Rosenwasser. Alongside Jim Fennerty. Jim, thank you for joining us, by the way, for the, this full day. It's It's been fun so far, and I'm sure we're going to have some more fun for the next three quarters and change. Simon, I'm honored to be up here. It's a pleasure to do this. So Penn Charter will boot it away. And the punt hangs up in the wind, but it's going to get some help from the wind. And take a Penn Charter bounce inside the 30 and to the 29-yard line. You know, Jim, we, we showed the highlights of the 2016 game uh, before we, we came on here. And one thing that, looking back at that game, that, that really struck me was that it was a defensive battle, right? It was 0-0 at halftime of that game, but there were just big plays. There were a few big plays that were the difference. And I think we might see the same here today, where you've got some playmakers on each team and good defenses but it's going to be those big plays, right, that, that really stand out. Yeah, I, I believe so. In, in this kind of game, with all the tension that's involved, uh, it generally, you know, the, there is the old adage that the cream rises to the top, and there are, there are great players out there, and there are playmakers that can really make some things happen. And that's, that's really what's going to happen. I, I remember uh, 
in the 2016 game, there was a, GA was blessed with a young man, a quarterback by the name of Kyle McCluskey, who then went on to Villanova to play yep. and then uh, switched over and then now is playing for Penn State basketball team. But Kyle just kind of, as a senior and as a quarterback and as a leader, kind of just made some things happen and willed GA to a win there. But that we can expect the same kind of thing this year. Vince Capone with the game-winning field goal in that 2016 game. And we had a run for Trey Vance, and then after the play, as you can see us showing the referees, a flag came out as there was a shove. The referees, I think, are still deciding what to call here, and here we're about to get the official call, whether they pick it up or not. So a personal foul and a face mask against Germantown Academy, and that's going to bring them back within their own 20, second and long against the win. Not the kind of situation you want to be in if you're GA. One of the biggest parts about a rivalry game is just keeping your emotions in check. Right. Now you're talking, or you're hearing from a longtime coach in Jim Fennerty. Who's your biggest rival on the basketball court, Jim? Most of the time, it's ourselves. <laughs> Just trying not to not to beat ourselves. Uh, but no, anytime anytime you play any of the interact games, it's, yeah. it's a big one. We also have a big rivalry going with St. Joe Prep. Speedy Morris is is one of my very best friends and an excellent coach. And so we play the prep, and that's always a tough one. But but keeping it, your emotions in check, that's a message that you always, always make sure that you, you emphasize always. those games. You just play the game. You don't play against the other team, you play the game. If you do your things the right way, you'll be fine. But anytime GA puts on uniform and, and Penn Charters across from him, it's a big game. They reset the down, so it's first down for Trey Vance on the run, and he gains four. So Vance, who has the ability to play linebacker, but he really has become the bell cow for Germantown Academy, so you don't want to overuse your bell cow. And they really feed him the rock on offense, especially after Jordan Longino went down. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we, we you know, Matt Birmingham has done a, done a great job, uh, but when, when you lose a player like uh, Jordan Longino, you have to make adjustments, and the coaching staff has done a really good job with that. So second and long. And they'll run it on second down. And Vance is smashed by Muhammad Harris, his second tackle. The senior, six foot 160, brings up a third and 12. So the wind swirls here, another gust. You mentioned in the girls' soccer game, there's sort of this baseline wind, which is significant, but then every now and then you'll get these big gusts, and you never know when they're gonna come. And on a third and long, with the wind in Germantown Academy's face, it's gonna be a tough pickup here. Five and a half to go here in the first quarter. Brittingham behind center, in the gun. Time to throw, now he's gonna run, and nowhere to go as the pocket collapses, and Ryan Maloney comes in to take him down, and that will do it for the GA drive. Out comes the punting unit for the second time. GA with a 5-0 record in non-league games to start the season. And then they lost Jordan Longino, Things have taken a turn for the worse this season as this is a high punt that gets caught up in the wind. And GA thinks that Penn Charter touched the football, but I don't think the referee saw it that way. But that's about a six yard punt. And if you didn't have an indication of, of how impactful the wind is, there's the perfect indication. And to your point, Jim, special teams, right? Special teams, that's, that's what the coaches were worried about, especially in the area of punting. So Penn Charter is going to have great field position here. And field position is going to be a big story throughout this one with the wind blowing. 
the Patriots 34 yard line. Haven't seen much from Ed D yet. And they will get him the ball immediately. But a good tackle from Jack Sheridan, the linebacking captain for German da Germantown Academy. He's really the, the quarterback on the defense, if you will. Jack's had a terrific year. He's being recruited. Uh, he's, a, he's an excellent student. He's being recruited by a number of colleges, and uh, he's had a terrific year for GA. He's assumed leadership both on and off the field. So Ed Sadie with negative yardage, that's not going to last very long. I know how talented he is. Again, the Temple Bound senior with over 1,100 yards this season. This is not Sadie, but it's Matthew Marshall. And a solid run there. Bring up a third and call it six for Penn Charter. 3.40 to go, good field position for Penn Charter. In speaking with Coach Coyle before the game, he, he really wanted to praise, he, he felt that everyone thinks of Penn Charter as being a, a one-man team, but he really is really praising his the balance that he has. There's some really talented football players out there, in addition to a, a very great run, runner in Ed C.D. Jones almost got Germantown Academy to bite. It's Sadie trying to turn the corner. He does so with a stiff arm inside the 10 to the 5. And Sadie puts Penn Charter in business here in the first quarter. Such a strong runner. You can see the speed, the lateral speed from east to west, and then the ability to turn on the Jets. And then the strength with the stiff arm to give him an extra boost. Say D, first Central High School, he scored in all three phases of the game. He scored an offensive touchdown, running the ball, a punt return, and an interception return for a touchdown. Talented kid. He really is. The ability to turn that corner defines a Division I football player. It's Kyle Jones on the fake. He'll take it himself into the end zone for a touchdown, and the Quakers strike first. Right in front of their fans who have traveled here to GA. It is Kyle Jones who, as we mentioned, can make plays on the ground. Nine touchdowns rushing, now 10 touchdowns rushing on the season for Kyle Jones. He's averaging over six yards per carry this year. And the extra point is up. The extra point is good from Ryan Bradby. So Penn Charter on the board, seven to nothing. And that will bring us to a little bit of a break in the action. We're, we're gonna go to our coach's corner and, and we've got sort of a, a special thing planned here. A few years ago, we had Peter McVeigh on, the legendary Peter McVeigh of Germantown Academy, and, and he was on our, on our pregame show, and he talked about Matt Dents. And, and I thought it was a really nice thing that he that he was said about Matt Dents. So we're gonna have we're gonna let Peter McVeigh introduce Matt Dents, the coach for Germantown Academy here, and introduce Matt Dents. You know Matt very well as the head coach of this program. What do you got to say about the head man for GA? Well, the head man for GA has made a genuine difference in the quality of the football program. Uh, at Germantown Academy, he's really turned things. He's turned things around, and not just that. He, he's been a great football coach, but he's a great school person as well. And uh, we're really happy that he's with us. Legendary Peter McVeigh introducing Matt Dents, the head coach for for Germantown Academy, as we kick off here, and GA will get the ball back. And a good return up the middle. It is. Lacey Snowden on the return. Snowden has touched the ball a couple of times already. Nice return up to the 50 and decent field position. But anyway, Jim, Peter McVeigh, he was he was such a legendary part of the community from, from your perspective. He still talk is. Talk about him. I, yeah. I, I was blessed for over 20 years to teach a class with, and Peter sat in all the time and just enjoyed it. He is he still remains to be the heart and soul of GA. And, and uh, he, he, he was, as well as I am, a huge fan of Matt Dentz. Matt Dentz has been a terrific addition to Germantown Academy, not only on the football field, but also throughout the community. So we're, we're blessed to have him here. 
Snowden on a keeper, and he a pretty favorable spot there. They'll give him a couple of yards. On the other side, Tom Coyle, the head coach for Penn Charter. You got to talk to him, a soft-spoken guy. Sixth year, he's the head coach at Father Judge for 13 years. After being the assistant at Penn Charter for another 13, 33rd year overall coaching high school football. A handoff up the middle, it's Vance. Stonewalled at the 50. Yep. Both, both Coach Coyle and Coach Dance both played for the legendary Whitey Sullivan and Father Judge. And they both uh, they both give great credit to Coach Coach Sullivan for their development and, and their desire to want to coach. Another big wind gust here. That was actually Snowden on the recent carry. And Trey Vance is back in the game here on third down and six. Receivers split out on either side. On tight end. Birdingham makes some adjustments. High snap, he brings it down, hands off to Vance. And again, it's Muhammad Harris in there on the stop. He's been all over the place. Gonna bring up a third or a fourth and four. And we'll see what GA wants to do. Looks like we might have a timeout, and we do. It's going to be Penn Charter who calls timeout. Fourth down and four here. Trying to preserve that wind advantage. Yeah. You know, it, it's if you're GA here, you, do you punt? Because it's almost like it doesn't do you any good, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting decision for Coach Stentz to make because uh, the, last, the last kick – even though the, the kicker is an outstanding punter, six yards because of the wind. And, uh, you know, you can't fool Mother Nature. So it'll be interesting to see what Coach does. Maybe uh, maybe kicks out of bounds a little bit or, or tries to do something with it. So Tom Coyle calls the timeout. And it does look like GA's got the punting unit out. Wouldn't surprise me to see them, see if maybe they could pull Penn Charter off. Yeah, Mulba is off, back to punt, but nope. they do snap it. And Mulba with a low line drive kick. Actually pretty good for yeah. the conditions. Sets up a chance at a return for Penn Charter, but GA's got it covered. And it was Aaron Mayone who couldn't get much, and that actually turns out to be a pretty good decision for Germantown Academy after a decent punt will back up Penn Charter and Jim 53 seconds before they switch sides of the field. So GA are going to be focused on holding Penn Charter with the ball at this side of the field, and then they know that the Quakers have to go against the wind. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, if uh, the Quakers come out and try to throw the ball, but oh, if you have Edward St. E in your backfield, you're probably hesitant to do that. And D flanked alongside Kyle Jones. A handoff to him on first down. Lowers his shoulder and a gain of five. Luke Strauss on the tackle. Linebacker for GA. 5'11", 215 pound junior. Defensive coordinator for GA, Steve Moll. Coach Mall comes out of the uh, Central Bucks West tradition. He's a great player up there and a terrific teacher here at Germantown Academy. Second down, Jones to throw across the middle. He does not have his man, Mayone. Tried to snatch it up off the turf. Just a little off timing there. They got past the cornerback. Would have been a big play if they could complete it. But again, it's going to be tough to throw the football in this wind. 10.9 seconds to go here in quarter number one. GA got a little bit of help there from a, a freshman point guard by the name of Jake Shue, number 22 there, and came over from the safety to help out a little bit. Freshman point guard for you in a couple weeks, huh? You bet. <laughs> you bet. Talking to the head basketball <laughs> coach of Germantown Academy, Academy for such a long time done such great things at GA and continue to do so and we're honored to have you on to bring the action here at GAPC Day, one of the best days of the year.
for both of the communities. Everybody knows great players make good coaches. That's how it works. I've been blessed to have some great ones. Third down and seven, Jones, quick strike to the far side, completes. And he's got Matt Marshall for a first down, and the chains will move with six seconds to go in the quarter. Stop the clock, and then I believe they'll restart it, and they do for the spot. So we will reach the end of the first quarter with Germantown Academy, and Penn Charter doing battle. It is the Quakers with a seven to nothing lead on a touchdown run from Kyle Jones. So we'll be back for the second quarter of play live here on the play-by-play -play sports network. Simon Rosenwasser and Jim Fennerty. They're coming back for you in a moment. Start of the second quarter here. As the squad switch sides of the field. Penn Charter now moving left to right or into the wind. Chilly afternoon here from Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Glad to have you along for the ride. It's Ed Sadie on the carry. And he's chased down by a couple of Germantown Academy players, including Gunnar Bogorowski. Makes the play, second and six. Brings up a second and six. 48 championships in school history for Penn Charter. Long storied rivalry with Germantown Academy and the, the Quakers have had the edge overall. 84, 36, and 11 all time, the record. Their handoff through the middle, it's say D who gains two. It'll be third and four from the 48 yard line. As we're off and running here in the second quarter. Good balanced attack for Penn Charter this year. 291 points for, 207 points against. Here's a third down attempt. Jones snatches it out of the air. A high snap. Say D was hit at midfield and still able to carry defenders right at that first down marker. They're going to give him a first down here. And Say D so tough to bring down. But a fun player to watch for a long time and. Will have a long career ahead of him as he goes on to the next level. Had some good ones here in the, in this matchup, Jim. Some some really good players in GAs and and Penn Charter's history. Certainly is. Uh, it's, it's always fascinating when all the alums get together. It's amazing how much better they got as they got older, which is good stuff. Here's Sadie, and he's got another first down as he gains 11. Be interesting if you guys put together an, an all-time list of, of those players. I, I bet you Alvin Williams would be on there for your, for your basketball squad. Uh, Maggie yep. Lucas sure. for your girls squad. Carolyn Doty. Matt Ryan Matt. would be would be playing quarterback for for Penn Charter's right. all-time right. team. Matty Walsh uh, who played down in Florida and in the NBA. Right. Ray Melchione at Duke and Teddy Scooches. So it's been a lot of great ones. More to come here. Yep. First and ten. Jones fires to the near side and completes. 
Good quick strike as he's got number 33 in Brandon Thomas. His 18th catch of the year. Senior captain in Brandon Thomas. Six foot 173. And there he is, number 33 in the huddle. As Jones comes back in to deliver the message. Penn Charter driving. Wind has died down for the moment, which is to Penn Charter's advantage. As they work into it, Matt Marshall on the carry. And it'll bring up a third and short. Marshall's been a good change of pace back. As you said, everybody wants to talk about Ed D, but you need to have that second option. Yeah, Penn, Penn Charter's really, their skill people are very, very good. So it'll be a third and short. Ball on the 26 yard line of Germantown Academy. here. It's safety stacked up at the line. Hans Lillis. How about 6'4", 225 to bring down Ed Sadie. But he does have enough for a first down. It'll be first and 10. The 25-yard line. The mark of a great bat. Gets by that first hit and still is able to pick up that first down. The great backs, even on the short games, they know exactly, they seem to always get exactly what they needed, right? That's it. That's it. That was As great if that yellow line is on the field for them, right? Right. And that was a great effort by Hans Lillis to make the stop there. Fresh set of downs, though. It's Kyle Jones who makes the say D, keeps himself. And a solid gain inside the 20, inside the 15. And Penn Charter. Driving yet again. Kyle Jones using his legs. Already got in the end zone that way. So he goes over to Tom Coyle to get the call. And another first and ten coming. Here for Penn Charter as they look to strike again and make this a two-score game early. Let's go, T, let's go! Jones throws and it's batted down by Lillis. There's that 6-4 frame. <laughs> Comes in handy, doesn't it? He's uh, also the starting center on the basketball team. So. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Hans, Hans is working on his uh, vertical leap right there. Yeah, you'll be taking advantage of that height, I'm sure. Second and 10. Say D in the backfield, fake it to him. Jones stacked up. Elijah Roten was in on him. And Jones was able to evade that tackle, but then Roten got some help with some other GA players. And it'll be a third and nine upcoming here. It's a big spot in the game, Jim. We're talking about really a seven to nothing game. And it's still early, there's still plenty of time, but when you, you go back and you watch a game afterwards, it's these big moments that, that do matter a lot. This is one of them. That's it, it's early, but the, the game can get out of hand if you don't take control now. So Ben Charter looking to put their foot on the gas pedal. Jones hands to Say D. They're gonna run it on third and nine. And I guess you, if you're Tom Coyle, you're thinking this is four down territory regardless. Into the wind, you're probably not gonna kick it. So yeah, you run on third down, give yourself a manageable fourth down here. Looks like he's gonna go for the field goal though. Wow. So, I was wrong. And they will attempt the field goal with Ryan Bradby who is one of the best, but it's blocked! Blocked by Germantown Academy, and that is huge. As Luke Strauss comes in and got a paw on it, and it remains seven to nothing. What a huge spot. That was a big stop there, big stop. So, 
you bring in Ryan Bradby, who had the highest scoring season by a kicker in Penn Charter history a couple years ago. As the wind continues the gust. And Germantown Academy comes up with the stop in the form of a blocked kick. So back onto the field comes GA's offense and a long field for Matt Brittingham as they start at the 20. Brittingham, a future college baseball player. Rolls left, now gonna run. And it's no gain as he's pursued heavily by Brendan Thomas. Sometimes good quarterbacks will tell you it's, sometimes it's more difficult to throw with the wind because of uh, the ability to just the ball just flies on you. So sometimes uh, experience that Matty has is a good thing there. Rather than just put that ball up for grabs, he just tuck it and ran himself. Does gain a yard. We'll hand off to Vance on second down. And he get close to the 25. But it'll bring up a third and just over five yards to go. Brittingham, obviously the, the backup quarterback at the start of the season. And Coach Dent said that he's just so proud of the way that, that Brittingham has stepped in, got them a win in an Interact League game against Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. And just wait his just to wait his time patiently and come in and and answer the bell when it's called. But here's an incomplete pass. It'll be a fourth down, and GA will be forced to punt. They're looking for Jerry Griffin Batchelor, one of their top receivers, but unable to get him involved early. So GA unable to do much with their possession after the blocked field goal, but at the very least they'll be able to s switch the field a little bit and boot this ball away and back Penn Charter back using the wind. Gorgeous punt, Say D lets it bounce, it's gonna drop at the 20, go inside the 10, gonna keep rolling as GA wills it. Look at this wind, take it inside the five yard line. Great, great job by Connell Sweeney, the kicker. Great job. Use the win, get it up there, and saw D let it bounce. He probably would have been better off trying to, to field it at least. It would have been risky, but it, it, it does cost them 30 yards almost as that ball goes inside the five. So field position huge, Jim, and now Penn Charter's got a long field to work with, and you know, backed up against your own end zone, they're going to want to run the ball. So it kind of telegraphs their next couple of plays. You, you bet. But we'll see what we'll see what uh, Coach Coach Coyle has up his sleeve. You never know. I guess when you're a football coach. You got to be creative and do what the other team is not expecting. They run it with Kyle Jones. Right. Well, you have to be careful down there. I mean, you're, you're, you're very near the end zone, so uh, got to be careful with the ball. So you probably put the ball in the hands of the guys you trust the most. Good story about Connell Sweeney. Connell Sweeney is also one of a, a, a very, very good lacrosse player. And it's, a, it's a tribute to the Interact League that we have so many multi-sport kids out here, which is great. The talented kids all over the field, no doubt. It's Say D, who's... Arguably the most talented. He's got a gain of five. A tough run on second down will bring up a third and three. Say D, as we mentioned earlier, the most rushing yards in school history for Penn Charter. Over 3,000 of them. He put on a show a couple years ago in that GA Penn Charter. Turned into an Interact Championship game at the end of the season. Go, can't see the game. Big third and three here. Gonna run it with Say D. Got the 
first down and more. Look at him go across the 25-yard line, and Hans Lillis finally brings him down and gets in the face of Say D, but it's Ed Say D with the last laugh and a first down and 10 with 3.30 to go. He's tough to bring down when you're just uh, one man. He's got to almost gang tackle him to get him down. So fresh set of downs for Penn Charter. They have escaped out of their own shadow. And a run on first down, minimal gain. Coming off a win against the Episcopal Academy are the Quakers. 27 to 23 before that Springside Chestnut Hill 35 to 13 the only loss came to Malvern Prep 51 to 17 and that's pretty much been the story for everyone that Malvern Prep has played this year phenomenal yeah. year for the Friars everybody in the league is waiting to see when Malvern plays the Philadelphia Eagles yeah it's Kyle Jones on the keeper after the fake to safety and he's and again, a gain of six up the left side. And we saw Malvern battle with one of our other common schools, the Petty School, earlier. And, and the Petty School had been blowing out teams, and Malvern beat them. So they've been superb this year, no doubt about it. First Malvern, to ten. They are deep in every position. Kyle Jones again, and man, this is a tough running attack to stop. When you've got two guys that can beat you. So Kyle Jones and Say D, Jim. I, I mean, you got two guys that can beat you with your legs. You, you fake it to, to Ed Say D, you almost have to respect that but then Jones can beat you absolutely and you don't know which way you're going to get hit with it this time they do hand it off to Ed Sadie up the middle a solid gain on first down and this rushing attack is cruising past midfield though time going to be of the essence here still two timeouts left for Penn Charter 141 to go as they hurry up to the line three timeouts for Germantown Academy but PC's got the ball Say D. Left side, first down. Got to really credit that front line, the offensive line of, of Penn Charter, doing a great job getting off the ball. So Penn Charter does take the timeout now. 43 yard line. Competition Cup history here. As we take a look, 2017 it was a tie, 2016 went to GA, and you can see the, the results here, 132 years of GA versus Penn Charter, and across the way we also have the, the results for, for all of the games here today, and, the, and they've got the, the logos for for each winning team. Let's try to get a shot of that for you in, in a moment. There you go, boys water polo, girls water polo, to, to girls water polo to Penn Charter, boys water polo to GA, girls cross country to Penn Charter, boys cross country to Penn Charter, golf to Penn Charter, girls tennis for Penn Charter. Field hockey for GA. Boys soccer to Penn Charter, girls soccer to both of them because they tied and here's football. So it looks like Penn Charter has locked up the competition cup already here as we start as we uh, are almost at halftime of this football game. But regardless, a, a wonderful day. Absolutely. And the competition cup, uh, the credit for that goes to the two headmasters at the time, Penn Charter's headmaster Daryl Ford and uh, Jim Connor from Germantown Academy. It's Ed Say D off the screen with reservations for six. A touchdown for Penn Charter. Oh, 
Out of the timeout, what a call by Tom Coyle. That's what I was just going to say. That was a great call from Tom Coyle. He caught, caught GA a little flat-footed on that one, and they, they got the ball to their best runner, and he had a caravan blocking for him. Yeah, you get the ball in space to Ed D. he'll do the rest. Remember the big play that he scored in 2016 was a 75-yard short pass and then long run for Ed D for a touchdown, and he does it again here in 2018. The extra point is up and good, and Penn Charter has taken a 14 to nothing lead. So, so after we thought that Germantown Academy looked like they took some of the momentum with that blocked kick, Penn Charter able to force them on a three and out, get the ball back in a very, very impressive drive. That was a 95-yard drive capped off by an Ed D. 45-yard touchdown reception. It was a great drive, and they, and they all throughout that time, they took off so much time off the clock that GA just never got a touch, chance to touch that ball. It was a great effort by Penn Charter. And now we got to see what the Patriots will do. The Patriots will come back. They're, they're a bunch of gritty kids, gutty kids, and they'll, they'll, they'll be working hard. So hopefully they can get something on the board here in a short period of time remaining, but, you know, we'll see what goes on. we got the... Good flair in the stands, cheering for, for Ed Say D. They bring out all the stops here on GA Penn Charter Day, signs all over the place, people all over the place, food trucks, music, foam fingers. Security guards directing traffic, make sure that enough people have spots to park. As after the Penn Charter touchdown, the kickoff will be received by Germantown Academy. Now 109 to play. They've had some trouble throwing the football, but you're almost forced to here. Yeah, I think uh, we'll see what happens here. You, whether you whether you uh, you try to throw the football or perhaps you run it out and run that clock out and regroup it at halftime. Uh, one thing about the the, the crowd, Simon, they, the the. Old tradition used to be that when Germantown Academy was in Germantown, that the people and the students would walk from uh, GA down to Penn Charter or Penn Charter up to GA. Uh, we moved up to a, a beautiful campus up here now, and it doesn't seem like it's affected the crowd one negative bit. No, it hasn't, and it hasn't affected the rivalry. When was that? When was that that you guys that they moved we, in we've here? We've been we've been on this campus now for about fifty over fifty years. Over 50, yeah, yeah. yeah as so long as I can remember, yeah, GA has been yeah. been here. It's a beautiful setting, a beautiful campus. I know when Bradley Cooper was here at GA, he was at this campus, right? Uh, Bradley Cooper was here. He was a basketball player for two years, and then he, How was he turned, the turned to tennis. Yes, he did. He's a was great he, guy. Was he? A, was he a good basketball player? He could really probably shoot. not as good as acting. Well, his he was he was very smart because his point guard at that time was some kid named Alvin Williams, and so he he knew like I'm going to be in the backcourt with Al. That was a pretty good move. He probably thought Alvin Williams was going to be the most famous player on that <laughs> team, but. A couple Oscars later, he's had something to say about that as they give to Trey Vance up the right side. Bradley is smart enough. He's always made good decisions. We, we had a sighting here. Somebody mentioned that, that Bradley might be here. We don't. We can't confirm. Uh, I know we had one of our camera operators looking to, to, to find him, uh, and we, we will get him on if we can. But anyway, second and nine. And this one is given off to Vance by Brittingham. Really creatively done, but then Vance loses the football. Might have gotten it back, and they're going to keep the clock moving under 30 seconds. Could have been disastrous in a couple of ways for GA. But they will keep the football, though they might not be able to get another playoff. Under 20 seconds to play, and they, they have a timeout if they wanted to call it, but looks like they're just going to run one more play here on the 30-yard line. End of the second quarter, Brittingham rolling right. Looking, firing, completes, out of bounds with .1 seconds to go. And they'll let the clock run out, and that will do it for the first half of play. So 
Penn Charter with two touchdowns, the two likely suspects with Kyle Jones running one in, and then Jones actually threw another one, but to Ed Say D, and it's 14 to nothing here on GAPC Day. Jim, your thoughts from the first half? Well, Penn Charter has relied on their strength on the, on the running game, and they've been very effective at it. GA is going to have to make some adjustments to try to stop that, clog that, that middle up especially. It seems like that's where they're going. But uh, GA kids have been tough all year, and, and uh, I'm sure that the coaching staff will get them ready to come out for a strong second half. So one more half of football to play. We'll leave you with highlights from 2016. I know we showed them in the pregame, but we'll do it again here at halftime. The 2016 highlights between GA and PC. Always a fun day, and it was a couple of years ago, as you'll see. Enjoy. It's the, it's the 47th straight year that I've been here. It's a beautiful day. It's great competition, and there's a lot at stake today, um, as there often is on this day. But we're uh, vying for a share of the Interact crown, and, and Penn Charter certainly wants to get in our way. Um, yeah. Both teams have had a great year, and uh, we're both excited. As you just mentioned, Germantown Academy wins here today. They've got a share of the Interact crown with Malvern Prep. And introduce Matt Dents. You know Matt very well as the head coach of this program. What do you got to say about the head man for GA? Well, the head man for GA has made a genuine difference in the quality of the football program uh, at Germantown Academy. He's really turned things, he's turned things around. And not just that, he, he's been a great football coach, but he's a great school person as well. And. Uh, we're really happy that he's with us. And another guy you're really happy to have as part of the GA program is Kyle McCloskey as we spotlight him, the yeah. quarterback for this Germantown Academy squad, going to play at Villanova next year. He You've is. had a chance to teach him. I'm sure you have great things to say about him. Big number seven, I'll tell you. He, he's a, a very good uh, athlete, a great quarterback, a, re, a genuine leader here, and he's, he's um, a terrific student. I taught him two years ago, and he... Uh, he was in the classroom, he was a positive force just like he is out on the gridiron. And, and I'm really proud of him because he's a terrific guy, comes from a great family. Well, we have two of the best quarterbacks that you're going to see here in the Interact. In the interact. Uh, right. Michael Natkowski on the other yeah. side, one of the best that you're going to see. But Kyle McCloskey, yeah. one of the best in GA history as well. So at halftime, the score is 0-0 zero to zero here between the Patriots and the Quakers. He's going to run, hits the hole on the right side. He dives to the end zone. Touchdown. Netkowski looks. He fires deep down the field. He's looking for Tucker. It's caught by Tucker. And he escapes three Germantown Academy players inside the 10. And he's pushed out inside the 5. A whirlwind of emotions on that one play. The biggest of the game for Penn Charter, and the Quakers are knocking on the door. Receiver, another bunch-looking formation. It's a pitch to Sadie. He's got a hole. He is in for the touchdown. 30th installment of GAPC Day. McCloskey on first down, throws. He completes. He's got a man wide open down the middle. Touchdown, Patriots. Mike Riley. Netkowski evades pressure. Throws on the run, completes to Sadie across midfield. Sadie turns on the Jets. He's still on his feet inside the 20. Touchdown, Penn Charter. Oh, man. Or do you send out Vince Capone right now? And you saw a little pat of the head for Vince Capone as he steps out onto the field for a chance to win the Interact for his football team. The senior with the biggest moment of his football career so far. The holder will be Mike Riley.
The kick is up. The kick is good. Vince Capone knocks it through. And GA takes a 17 to 14 lead with 2.4 seconds remaining. And that is gonna do it. GA wins. They are Interact champions. 17 to 14 final. They pull it out in fine fashion.
Back we come to Cary Stadium here. Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Chilly, windy day. Simon Rosenwasser, Jim Fennerty for the 132nd installment of GA versus PC. 14 to nothing game as Penn Charter leads. A touchdown from Kyle Jones running the football and then he threw one to Ed Say D. And those are the two scores. And Penn Charter will have the ball to start the second half. Jim, your thoughts on the second half? I guess if you're, you're Penn Charter, you, you're you going to run the football and, and milk this lead. If you're GA, what do you have to change? Yeah, you're going to – well, you're going to have to stop that running game. I mean, Penn Charter is going to stick with what's working, and you're going to have to stop that. You're going to have to get them – get a, couple, a few three and outs. And then uh, and then you got to take advantage. you gotta, you got to go down there and be aggressive. And I'm sure they will. I'm sure they've been told the right thing to do, and they have the wind – to start this third quarter, so let's hopefully they can put it together. So Penn Charter will start at the 20 for a touchback here. And the Quakers, who are 7-2 and two to start this game, looking to move to 8-2. and two. Last year, Jim, they were 9-1. and one. First time since 1905 that Penn Charter had nine wins in a season. So things on the up and up for Tom Coyle's squad. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Here's Jones who takes the snap and hands to Ed Sadie. Lots of room for Sadie, and he is loose across midfield. Ed Sadie is going for a touchdown on the first play from scrimmage in the second half. It is 20 to nothing. And Say D with an 80-yard run for a touchdown. Needless to say, not the way the Patriots wanted to start the half. Probably the way the Quakers wanted to start, though. Absolutely. Give it to the all-time leading rusher at Penn Charter, and he does the rest. He is something else. You look at the, the numbers. You do your research for a game, right? You see the numbers. You see the accomplishments. And then you come and you watch the kid play. And he really does have it. I mean, there's a reason he's going to be playing D1 football, but every facet. I mean, he's got the speed, he's got the strength, he's got the patience, and he's showing it all here today. He is. He's had, he's had, he's had a great uh, first part of the game here. And uh, it, when you're recruited by a, a big-time football program like Temple, you, you better have it, and he does. So tough spot now for Germantown Academy. Good news is they'll get the ball. 11.46 to play here in the third quarter, but bad news is the offense has had some trouble moving the football. And they are at the bottom of a tall mountain to climb here in the second half. And Matt Dents will send his troops out for battle. Try to muster something up here. GA needs a, a, a play. They need that big play to spark them. Get them going. Get them, get them feeling that they can win this game. No Jordan Longino, the starting quarterback at the beginning of the season. Had to adjust their expectations as the, the season has gone on. As here comes the kick. Low line drive. That's bobbled and picked up by GA. And out of bounds at the 24. When, when Longino went went down, he was talking to Coach Dents. The kind of kid Jordan Longino is, he felt bad. And he felt bad for the community, that he was letting the community down. And, and, and Matt Dents had to say to him, you can't think like that, right? You, you got to make sure that, that you put yourself as number one, your health is number one. That's, that's the epitome of the Longino family. Uh, Jordan comes from a terrific uh, family. And his parents have taught him that. And uh, dad was a former basketball coach at SMU. Uh, mom is just an abs absolutely terrific lady. And uh, Evan Eric, his older brother, was a terrific player here at Germantown Academy. And Jordan, Jordan is a chip off the old block there. He's, he's, a, he's a great kid and team first type of guy. Trey Vance up the middle. You just got to look at Longino on the sideline wearing the hoodie. And right up in the thick of things next to next to coaches. And 
good news for GA fans and Coach Jim Finnerty alongside me is that he is expected to play a significant portion of the basketball season. He better or it might be an early retirement for Coach Finnerty. <laughs> Stop in the backfield as Trey Vance goes down, and it'll be third and seven. Talk about off-field leaders. Vance has been one of those as well. He really has, from what I understand, been a, a leader in the community for, for Germantown Academy. A lot of different groups of friends, and everybody seems to get along with, with 29, the running back. Je Trey's a terrific young man. Here's Brittingham throwing low and incomplete, intended for Timmy Ruth. The receivers just have not been able to get involved on both sides right. of the football, the Penn Charter side and, and uh, GA side. It's been one of those games, tough to, tough to throw, got to keep it on the ground, but going to be tough to do so when you're down by 21 points, and here comes a punt for GA. Quick drive, three and out. Thinking about the fake almost, it seemed. This ball skied up into the wind and brought down by Penn Charter. And Aaron Mayone, who's got a good return, out of bounds at the 35, and Penn Charter with good field position. This defensive stand here becomes very important for GA. They have to they have to put a stop here soon. Yeah, stop the bleeding, as they say. Yep. Turn that momentum around. They have not been able to solve this rushing attack for Penn Charter. I don't believe Jones has a single. No, he's got two or three completions, but vast majority of the time they're keeping it on the ground and still having success. Jones and Sadie in the backfield. It's Sadie who takes the carry. Across the 35 Sadie to the 32. Same as Dean in on the stop for Germantown Academy, 6 4 3 10. Now you got some big bodies on this defensive line for, for GA. 6 4 2 25, Hans Lillis. 64310, same as Dean. Roten 65312. It, it might be it might be the biggest uh, lines that uh, Matt's had during his six years here, or seven years here. Uh, great kids too. Uh, Duke University is getting a terrific young man in, in Elijah Roten. He's yeah. just a, he's just a class act. He came out last year and uh, played basketball, and he can set some good screens. Jordan Longino was glad to have him out on the floor. Jack Sheridan was the most recent tackler for GA. Third and eight. CD has the first down and he's got a touchdown for Penn Charter. And the Quakers are rolling here on the road. 27 to nothing. And Sadie with touchdown number three on the day. Might be his last game as a Penn Charter Quaker. Well, it is his last game as a Penn Charter Quaker. We at GA are certainly hoping so. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to see any more of him if you're the opponents of Penn Charter as the extra point clanks off the uprights. But a phenomenal career, and he is ending it just as you would expect Ed Sadie to end it. 27 to nothing, Penn Charter leads. Another touchdown from Sadie that was got a 28-yard run from the senior running back. Having coached as long as I had, you get into these kind of situations where just th things just aren't going your way at all. And this is really when you test it, you find the test of the character of, of your own players. It's the coaches will uh, will continue to coach, and the players need to continue to play, and they need to concentrate on fundamentals. You got to do. You're not going to score 27 points on one play. What you're going to do is you got to get get out there and just. 
concentrate on making sure that this play, this next play, is, is the best play that you have. I'm sure our guys will try to do that. It's a really good perspective from Jim Fennerty. As a little pooch kick here will be picked up by GA. I'm sure, I mean, you guys have won a lot of games, but you've been in games where you've been down 20 points, 30 points, and you have to say to your team, keep fighting, right? And, and those are those are the times when things, the true, like you said, the true character comes out. Yeah, I, I remember several two years ago we were at a game up at Malvern Prep and. Uh, it was Kyle, Lungino, uh, Kyle McCluskey and Evan Eric Longino, it was their team, they were the seniors. And, and we were down 25 to two in the uh, first half. And those, those two seniors just kind of said like, all right, enough of this, let's go, come on. And then we wound up winning the game by nine. And it was simply because the players just decided it wasn't any magic that the coaches had. Although I would, I would use that when I go in to negotiate, but <laughs> It was, it was simply the character of, of the team and, and the leadership there. And they just said, come on, let's go. And, and we won by nine. And people always give the coach credit, but really that was the players. So Matt Brittingham, if he wants to start a comeback, it's going to have to start sooner rather than later. Here's there you go. a little screen there you to go. Trey Vance, who stays inbounds across the 40-yard line, a first down for Germantown Academy. And that's probably the biggest offensive play we've seen for GA. That's how scarce the offense has been for the Patriots. Absolutely, one play at a time. They hurry up back to the line. Just been so tough to throw the football. You can even see there on that little screen to Vance. Brittingham gonna throw it here until he decides to run. And he's got good yardage, out of bounds, he's tackled. And no flag comes out. Muhammad Harris chased him down. But a solid game, they'll give him, what, six or seven. Oh, ten, 10 yards, all right, they'll give him a first down. There for Matt Burningham and a, a fresh set of downs here for the Patriots. They'll run it with Snowden, he got a good block. And he's got another first down and here's GA's Offense moving. Got a good block from Tayshawn Mack. Haven't talked much about the receivers for GA for obvious reasons, but receivers like to block. Snowden with good hands there. Got a good block from Elijah Roten on the left side. Roten comes in to try to help Snowden in getting a few more yards, but, and he's taken down. It's probably a gain of maybe one. But it'll be second down and long. The GA looking for any sort of momentum that they can muster from this drive here. So far, so good. They gotta punch it in. Vance with a good hole on the right side, and Trey Vance is inside the five. The hole sealed by Justin Wajda. Got left tackle, right tackle. GA's in good shape. Justin Wajda, the right tackle, 6'1", 270. And Elijah Roten, 6'4", 312, the left tackle. Again, the two of them have been mainstays in Patriots football for the last four years, each starting their 40th game in a row. All 40 games in their career. Incredible accomplishment for them to stay healthy and a, a true testament to their work ethic. A handoff to Trey Vance, and he is stacked up. Good work by Penn Tarter's defensive front. And Dean Bergman is in there celebrating. But the first to get there, Andre O'Neill, the sophomore linebacker. And with six and a half and counting, you could argue this is the game for GA. Penn Charter looking for a stop. This would really put them in a good spot. Fourth and two coming up. Brittingham looks at the sideline. 
gives the call to his offensive line. The crowd cheers. Brittingham is going to be taken down behind the line of scrimmage, and Penn Charter takes over on downs. The Quakers brought the house. And down goes Brittingham, and a long drive will falter inside the 10. On the 10-yard line, first and 10. Patriots needed to get some points there in that situation. That's a tough one for them. So six minutes to go, and now it'll be Penn Jarter who has number six on the field, likely will get the ball. as the Quakers now have complete control here of this game. And what do we got? Do we have a flag? As the referee had turned his microphone on for a moment, now goes back to speak with the other referee. And we'll await to hear the official call. So a personal foul against Elijah Rope. So, Jim, this is one of the dangers of a, of a rivalry game like this. It gets out of hand. You know how much the teams want to beat the other, and then frustration can set in. That's it. And, you know, this is, this is when you really have to keep your emotions in check. And you just go out and just play that next play. That's what that's what you have to do. You got to keep your singular focus. So it'll be a first and ten for Penn Charter. Fifteen yard penalty will bring them close to the twenty-five. Blue skies, sunny day, few clouds in sight. And Charter fans, they like what they see. And Kyle Jones behind center takes the snap, fakes to D, keeps it himself. He's got the first down and more. Kyle Jones across the 40 and down to the 45. And the dual rushing attack of Jones and Sadie has been the story for Penn Charter here today. As the Quakers rolling with a 27 point lead and a chance to go four and one in the Interact. Again, Penn Charter has an outside chance of tying Malvern Prep if they can get some help from Springside Chestnut Hill Academy who plays Malvern. But knowing what Malvern has done to teams this year, that's going to be a, a, a tough thing to ask for. Yeah, it's a tough ta task for anybody in the Interact to play Malvern this year. They're very, very good. And Penn Charter's game plan has been very simple but extremely effective. Yeah. We're going to run that ball. Say Dean Jones in the backfield. Got Marcellus Poland, the receiver. And Aaron Myon split out to the right side. They're going to run it again. Keep it with Jones. Why not? First down. Jones keeps it by himself for another first down. Mike Rowan on the tackle. Go in. Correction. So they'll move the chains again. Pass the 50 to the 46. Under five to play in quarter number three. Live Interact Football here on Play-by-Play -play Sports Network. Another first and 10 here for Penn Charter, moving again. Kyle Jones, again. First down, again, for Penn Charter inside the 30, and they're keeping it going inside the 25. And this rushing attack for Penn Charter, continuing to smell blood on the other side of the field as they just pound the rock and keep having success. Kyle Jones has been impressive. He knew that the quarterback could throw the football, has some good 
stats through the air, but also good stats running the ball. And he's been as advertised and more for me. Yeah, he's, he's an excellent player. And then, as I said before the game, Coach Coyle was, was telling every, anyone who listened how, how much the young man has improved. And he's only a junior. Jones hands off this time. And it is Sadie. Stop for a short game. Elijah Roten got in there on the stop. So it brings up a second and ten. Big day for Penn Charter. They've already locked up the competition cup. And looking to put the cherry on top of a GAPC day with a football win. Say D again on the carry and Hans Lillis on the stop. Also got help from Mike Roa. Mike Rowan is a, is a sophomore uh, lineman uh, who missed the last couple games, uh, last game because of an injury, but it's good to see him back out there. Third and 10. Rolling right. Firing. Intercepted by GA. Big time play by Jake Shue. There's that freshman quarterback I was telling you about. Freshman quarterback, also freshman, freshman point, point guard. guard. There we go. He could play in a big moment as he just showed you. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So GA takes over. Interception from Jake Shue. And it'll be a first and 10 from the six. Like from the six yard line, first and ten. Keep it with Brittingham. He has just not had too much success running the football today. Gains about a yard. And Jim, that, that last drive for Penn Charter, they run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And then they pass the ball and throw an interception. <laughs> Sometimes coaches outthink themselves. Exactly. Nine. I'm sure you never outthink yourself, right? Uh, you'd have to speak with my wife, <laughs> and she would probably have a different answer. I'll make a point of it. <laughs> Second and nine. Brittingham looking to throw. Look at that ball. Man, all over the place. Just impossible. He's a baseball player, too. He's got a good arm, can, can cut it through the wind. But, but that ball just knuckled, and Lacey Snowden had no chance to catch it. As I said, some, sometimes throwing with the wind is even harder than throwing against it. So, And though the, the wind is going with GA right now, it's still somewhat cutting across the field. So it's not like a, a straight wind, and especially in a throw like that where he's cutting across the field, the wind's going to have an effect. But even on short passes, tough to throw the football, but they have to do it down by 27. No, Brittingham runs here, and he's got a first down as he slides across the 25. Wide open up the middle, and Brittingham took advantage. Great play by Matt. He read that situation and uh, saw what he had, and he took, it, took advantage of it. First and 10 at the 26. Last couple of minutes of the third quarter. Vance with a stiff arm to get to the outside, but nothing much up the field. Using Lacey Snowden to, to block for him. Chased down by Andre O'Neill on the tackle. Second and eight. That, that was one of those plays where the statistics don't reveal the kind of effort that you got from Trey Vance there. He could have very easily been a six yard loss, but he just simply used his will and, and a good straight arm and got at least picked up a couple game, a couple yards. Brittingham throws and trying to get it to Tayshawn Mack, but kind of slipped up a little bit. 
and wasn't able to get his hands up in time for that pass. Mack, 18 catches this year, 175 yards. We haven't talked much about Jerry Griffin Batchelor. He's a big part of this GA team, but I haven't been able to get him involved, a young, promising receiver. Jerry's had a terrific year for the team as, as a young sophomore. He's lined up in the slot here. Looking his way, and they are going to get it in his hands. And he has the first down. Right on cue, Jerry Griffin Batchelor with a first down. 5'10", 155. He's not the biggest man in the world, but he does a lot with the body that he's given. Went for 100 yards against Lawrenceville. The biggest part of Jerry Griffin Batchelor is his heart. Yeah. He gives it everything he has everywhere. Run up the middle is Trey Vance. And Griffin Batchelor did well with Brittingham after the Longino injury, and, and Coach Dentz was concerned about that because Griffin Batchelor and Jordan Longino are really close. They're very good friends, and they have great chemistry. So he was concerned that the chemistry wasn't going to carry over to, to Brittingham playing quarterback as Matt throws incomplete for Vance. Yeah, well, both Jerry and Matt, um, that became a point of emphasis for the two of them. And they realized, okay, Jordan went down, Matt needed to step up as a quarterback, and he certainly has done that. And Jerry said, okay, it's a different type of thing. Let's, let's figure out how to get this together. So that, that, that showed remarkable maturity for kids so young. Be a third and six here. The wind dies down for the moment. GA looking to uh, pass, but Brittingham tucks it and runs. He's got another first down. Matt Brittingham. A couple of big plays with his legs. And they finally blow the whistle inside the 40 yard line to the 36. So a good fight out of Germantown Academy. A couple of good offensive drives. They got an interception. And with 39 seconds to go, Matt Brittingham may not have thought that he was going to be playing on GAPC Day at the start of the season. Finds himself on the field with the ball. First and 10, third and uh, from the 36. First and 10 from the 36. And here's Brittingham with time now rolling. And it's complete. Wow, Timmy Ruth catches that ball as, as Brittingham was coming down. He was on his way down courtesy of Ryan Maloney, but he was able to get it away. But good work by, by Matt there. Showed great concentration there, just stayed with the play. And Timmy Ruth looked that in. And he, was, he was closely guarded, but closely covered, but he, he did a great job pulling that one in. Injury on the field. Timmy's another one of those guys, he's an outstanding student. Uh -huh. Um, and, and has some, some terrific uh, opportunities in front of him as well. Yeah, 5'10", 160. And Jim, it's, it's good to see Timmy playing today. You, you read some of the articles. I didn't see the video, but apparently there was a, a somber moment last week when Timmy took a huge hit. And he was down on the field, obviously popped back up, and he said, when can I go back in? But but it was good to see that he was okay uh, and he's back here today playing. And it's just one of those things that, it's such a violent game football, right? Yeah. And you sometimes forget the risk that the players take when they go out on the field. And that's one of those humbling moments that reminds you. Yeah, everybody was, everybody held their breath there for a long time. And uh, but, but Timmy just shrugged it off, thank God. And uh, he, he, he feels good and he's walking around and he's doing, doing out here and playing, playing the game he loves to play. But you do, you just, you know, sometimes yeah, you just have to hold your breath. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the coaches do a good job, the trainers do a good job on both both of these teams, just trying to make sure that they don't lose focus on the idea that the kids' health and their, and their, and their well-being comes first. I know that the, the trainers are, are uh, uh, something that, that should be underlined, that I know some of the players on the team wanted you to underline as, yeah, as how well that they do. The, the job that they do when nobody's looking to, to get these players ready and, like like I said, in a violent game. I mean, it's so important to have have trainers that are able to get your squad in, 
in good shape to play. And one of the things that, that I think is a great asset is that the GA, um, uh, probably for about the last 15 years, we, we, we went to the, the board of trustees and went to the head ma headmaster and said, we need a full-time strength and conditioning coach. And they, they gave us the resources to do that. And we have a terrific uh, person, Joe Miglieris, who, who is um, now our strength and conditioning coach. And he's done a remarkable job because if you want to play this game, and frankly, if you want to play any game at the high school level, you, you really have to, to be concerned about you know, being in the best shape that you possibly can be. Josh Kramer and Bruce McCabe, the trainers for Germantown Academy and the head trainer for Penn Charter, Morgan Wombold, as off the field comes, it looks like Muhammad Harris. Muhammad Harris, number two, who was pretty active early on in this game and he has to be carried off the field. Not a great sight, but he's already made his impact on this game and has helped Penn Charter out to a 27 to nothing lead. Let's just hope he's okay. Let's hope he's okay is right. Second and four. Brittingham looking deep down the field and it's incomplete. The direction of Tayshawn Mack, it's gonna be a third down upcoming. Flag on the play. So this flag will likely go against Penn Charter. But we'll wait for the official call as the head referee gets the signal from his counterpart. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, 15-yard penalty results in a first down. So a personal foul against Penn Charter. As we have reached the final seconds of this third. And a first and 10 at the 15 yard line for GA. Brittingham rolling and gets it away as another flag comes out. This one in the backfield. Looks like it could be a hold. Yeah. More times than not when you see a flag in the backfield on one of those extended plays where the quarterback's rolling out, that's usually what it is. Nice that they have the referees mic'd up here at GA. Not the case in, in all high school football places. Top notch all the way. Top notch all the way. Yeah, I keep telling you, you. Yeah, when are you going to get in a closed <laughs> press box? I'm working on that. <laughs> Actually, not anymore. That's not my. Josh McCarthy yeah, yeah. now has to do that. 15 yard penalty against against Germantown Academy going to bring him back as this third quarter has crawled to a halt. With penalties and injuries. So it's going to be a first and a mile for GA. Brittingham and the receivers look at the sideline for the call. And now they line up. Eight seconds left. Clock moving, play running. Incomplete. In the direction of Griffin Batchelor, the clock stops at 4.3 seconds left. See there, number 54 for Penn Charter. That is Gavin Zavorski on the coverage. Second and long. Brittingham out of the reach of his man Timmy Ruth and the clock stops at .9 seconds. So it'll be a third and long. And this we can pretty much guarantee will be the last play of the third quarter. A couple of quick plays there, quick and complete passes stopping the clock.
third and long. Brittingham looks, fires, completes to Vance. Short route, but Vance running hard inside the 10. What a great pickup there at great the end effort. of the fourth quarter, or third quarter. Great effort by Trey Vance there, great effort. So he's going to give GA a chance to convert a fourth down at the start of the fourth quarter. So we'll end the third, the score 27 to nothing. Penn Charter in the lead. Two touchdowns here in the third quarter for Penn Charter to add to their two touchdowns scored in the first half. So we'll go to the fourth and we'll be back with a fourth down attempt for GA on the other side of the field. Come back with the competition cup history yet again. 2018 will go to Penn Charter. Winners in the competition cup after a tie last year. And the football game still with time left. Fourth and three for Germantown Academy. A throw, a fade to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown, GA. Hans Lillis brings it down in the end zone. And the Patriots on the board with the first play of the fourth quarter. That was a beautiful pass by Matt Brittingham. Put it where only the receiver could catch it. And Hans was able to grab, Hans Lillis was able to grab that and bring it in. That's good. Good for the kids. Fourth and three, and you, you identify a one-on-one -on -one situation, and Hans Lillis has got a big body, right, to, to go to. And like you said, a good throw from Brittingham to be able to put it in the right spot, and the extra point is good. So 27 to seven is the score. And the Patriots on the board. So good to see GA fighting here in the second half, putting a couple of good drives together and putting some points on the board when this game really could get out of hand if, if GA led it. I think uh, one of the things that, that's a, a good sign down there is uh, Matt Dentz is extremely proud of having former players who come back to coach. You have Joey Taylor, who's down there working with the team, Kyle Donahue. They've all been out in wearing a GA uniform, being out there playing in this kind of game, and now they're back uh, giving back. And, and uh, I, I think that, you know, that just hearing those young coaches on the sidelines just saying, let's go, keep going, keep going, that's, that's an extreme positive. So now GA will kick away after their first score of the game. Continue to fight. Here's Nick Naminski to set this up and put it away, but one of those days where you've got to have a holder. Wind has been significant, continues to be so. It's been this way since early. We got here before 9 a.m. 
We had a little sweet spot with the temperature, but it's starting to dip as the sun dips. Across from Cary Stadium here. Just days like this, the reason I became a basketball coach. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. You're implying that you had a chance to become a football coach. Did you? Uh, only playing in CYO at that point and uh, just decided that uh, it would be a lot smarter uh, for me to take that round ball as opposed to that ball that doesn't bounce right. Yeah, that's true. It is a weird shape. First and 10, we'll leave it on the ground with Kyle Jones, the quarterback. And he's stacked up and finally the whistle blows. We hope you're warm and bundled up at home. The ideal way to watch a game. Gonna be a chilly night tomorrow night when the Eagles take on the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football. This will be interesting conditions, but. Till then, we've got some high school football on. You bet. Second and seven, it's Say D with a hole on the left side, and then he turns on the Say D Jets. Touchdown, Penn Charter. One of those games that, man, every time he touches the ball, Ed Say D has got a chance to go the distance. Touchdown number four for Edward Say D, and his 24th touchdown of the season. Just can't miss that first tackle on him. As soon as he, he, he's just such a great running back that if you miss a tackle, he's gonna make he's you pay for it. Yep. So the extra point is up, the extra point is good. Oh. And now an ugly scrum. We don't need this in any for either side. We don't need this. Flags flying in the. Man, this is finally broken up. But I wouldn't be shocked to see if we have some ejections. So. That wasn't pretty after the extra point. Now 34 to seven in favor of Penn Charter. So offsetting penalties. And, you know, I, I never liked the offsetting penalties because I, I feel like it gives the, the players who are involved in scrums like that a pass. Like at the very least, I would say, and, and it's tough to pinpoint because it seems like everybody on the field was involved there, but at least pinpoint a couple of the kids and throw them out, and then you've got an incentive for, for players not to do that kind of thing. Yeah, the good thing there in the, in the, in the, after the play is that the, both coaches kind of grabbed their teams and just said, okay, knock it off, let's play football. So that's, a, that's good leadership on the part of the coaches. Again, it's a likely uh, situation when you've got two big time rivalries such as these ones. Storied rivalry. And with a game that starts to get out of hand. Similarly to when you're watching a hockey game, and there's yeah. it's lopsided and it's in the late in the third period, and the team that's down knows that they're not gonna be able to get back into the game. That's when they know that you can get away with stuff like that, the the fights, as long as it's not gonna hurt your team. But you still don't want to say it, especially at the high school level. 
Right. You're dealing with young young people, and sometimes uh, frustration does kick in, and sometimes they they don't deal with it well. But they learn from that. Good return here from Timmy Ruth. Flipped down across the 40. So another chance for GA to do something offensively. Their good drive last time. The story has been Sadie and Joe. Sadie for the most part with four touchdowns for Penn Charter. The offense has been all right for, for GA, a couple of drives, but it's been tough to throw the football. Just have not been able to get to much of a rhythm. And here in the second half, they've been down pretty much the whole time. They've been forced to throw, though they're gonna run here as Birmingham slides down after a gain of one. No gain on the play, second and 10. Tackle from Andre O'Neill. Second and nine. There's Matty Brittingham getting the call from the sideline. As we are 10 minutes and 20 seconds and counting away from regulation time finishing up as that ball just dies out of the hand of Brittingham and falls to the ground. Incomplete, third down and nine. Timmy Ruth got the first down. A pass from Brittingham to Ruth will move the chains, keep the drive alive for GA. Ed D on the tackle. First and 10 from the 47. And a handoff to Vance who takes a pop. Again, it was Andre O'Neill on the stop. He's been everywhere for Penn Charter. Gonna look at some of the players up front for PC. Be second and eight. Tipped up in the air and incomplete. Griffin Batchelor came back to try and salvage that one, but will fall to the ground and stop the clock. Third down and eight. You have to really give credit to the uh, offensive and defensive lines of Penn Charter. They've done a great job today. They don't always get the credit. The linemen don't always get the credit that they deserve, but these guys have played really well today. But at the core, it's really what football is in terms of a battle in the trenches. There's a pass batted down at the line right on cue. The line makes another play. That time it was Gavin Zavorski, six foot 205 making the play for, for Penn Charter. If you don't have, I mean, you can have skill position players and it's, it's helpful, but if you don't have an offensive or a defensive line that, that makes an impact, you're, you're almost you're done. Yeah, you have to. You have to have the staples. You have to have the anchors, the the guys that that allow the skill players to do what they do. So GA will punt or fake, and that is what they do. They fake it, and I don't think they're going to pick it up yeah. on fourth and eight. Sweeney on the carry. And he's going to be marked just short. So Penn Charter will take over on downs, unless they come out to measure this. Yeah, 
the naked eye, he was a couple of yards short. And looks like they're going to measure. Very close to a first down. So, as you said, they'll bring out the sticks. And here they come. really get a look through those players, whether it's That's short or not by, by yep. Penn Charter's reaction. It is short, and the Quakers take over on downs. So a first and 10 for Penn Charter. A fake punt from GA does not work. 34 to seven, Quakers have a significant lead and the football. As Ed Sadie is in the backfield for Penn Charter. Goes in motion. Sort of to the tight end position. Kyle Jones bobbles the snap, but picks it up. Chased by Hans Lillis, who ends up making the tackle after a gain of five. Jones on the carry, tackled by Hans Lillis, and Mike Rowan picks up second. Mike Rowan also on the stop for GA. Second and five. GA looking like they're bringing pressure. They'll run up the left side and it's Marshall now with a big game. And Marshall inside the 20 to the 11. The rushing attack continues to be the difference for PC. Yeah, GA just has not had an answer for that all day today. So Matt Marshall has his biggest play of the day. Say D in the backfield, but Marshall there too. And it's Say D on this carry. Right side, Say brought D down. Elijah Roten on the stop. Elijah Roten on the tackle. Gain of three. I'm sure that the uh, Temple football coaches are hoping that uh, Coach Coyle takes Say D yeah, out. Right. Give him a rest. He's had a tremendous game. A two way player has been playing. Pretty much every snap defensively, too. Make the handoff. Jones will keep it. Roten makes another stop. Jones on the carry. Tackle by Elijah Roten. I wonder if Say D, you probably know this, if, he, if he's a multi-sport athlete. Does he play basketball or, or anything else throughout the season? Or I really don't know. Football is a sport. Yeah, I think football is a sport. I'm not sure if he uh, if he plays another sport or not. I know he plays this one pretty well. Yeah, sure does. Sure does. Third and short coming up. Seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. They'll hand it off to Marshall. And Marshall stood up. Hans Lillis Marshall on the stop. By Hans Lillis and Shane, Harkins. Shane Harkins also there for GA. First down Quakers. 
Wow, they just got enough for a first down there. So first and goal. Penn Charter up by 27. And looking to add on, potentially make this a 30-point game. Quakers have been impressive here today. Trying to go eight and two on the season. Say D, left side, touchdown. Number five on the day for Ed Say D, 25 on the season. And the future Al has the crowd hooting and hollering here. As Penn Charters faithful has traveled well, and they're liking what they see with a 33-point lead. It's up, it's good. So 41 to 7 the score. Oftentimes when the season ends on a on a note like this, it's pretty easy to forget the valiant effort that these kids have put together for all, all year long. Both teams uh, to become a a football player, to become a varsity athlete in the Interac, it takes a great deal of work and determination. And uh, the guys need to be credited with that and uh, you know, don't let one one bad experience sour an entire season. Yeah, it's been a good season for GA. It's been a frustrating one. They, they started they started five and zero, right? And you you you're thinking at five and zero. Coach Dents was talking about having to change your expectations throughout the season. You start five and zero. You're going into league play. You're feeling good, right? And then your starting quarterback goes down, and and things seem to have derailed. You know, and not not. And this is not taking anything. Um, away from Brittingham, but you, you right. sort of you, you have your offense around the skill set and you plan around the offense of the skill set of Jordan Longino, right. and that totally gets derailed when he goes down. Yeah, it's a uh, coach and staff did a remarkable job just keeping the guys together because it was Jordan was one of those transcendent players that could could change a whole lot of things, and uh, the GA kids kept playing and playing hard. Lacey Snowden lateraled that ball. And the G8. Jack Sheridan. Yeah, Jack Sheridan. Okay, there you go. He's got it, but didn't really advance it any, any no. further. Uh, the drive will start at the 30. Jim, I've got some uh, Philly basketball news that we'd like, since I, we've got you on the air, I'll, I'll, give, I'll like to get your opinion on. The Sixers just traded for Jimmy Butler. Did they really? Yes. Jimmy Butler is now a Philadelphia 76. There you go. Your thoughts? Uh, they Good def move. Yes, they de well. Would yes, they they, they they needed some. Uh, they needed a spark. They needed a little bit of a somebody coming off the bench or somebody starting. And, and I'm sure this adjusts the uh, the lineup for Coach Brown. Um, Coach Brown's daughter went to Germantown Academy and graduated from here, so we've got that GA connection. All right, good. We're we're tying and it in. You got it. <laughs> and we and we root for Brett. He's a he's a terrific coach. He's been through a lot with the Sixers with our rebuild, and uh, I wish him that's 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 uh, that should be a good pickup. Should give him some. Uh, some they need it forever, right? They well, they and, haven't had that number two guard that can that can shoot the ball, and they thought maybe Markel yeah. Fultz could develop into it, but. This, this goes against everything that I've ever been taught, but in the NBA, you have to score points. You have to score points, and, and your defense comes into play when they get into the playoffs, but you've got to score points. And the Sixers uh, have been riding an incredible season by Joel Embiid, uh, and, and Ben Simmons has done done great things, but they haven't really had that, that third or fourth uh, score other than J.J. Reddick coming off to make threes, but sometimes those threes aren't going to drop. So... That's really good news. So there you go. Jimmy Butler traded from the Timberwolves to the 76ers. Covington and Dario Saric 
going back to Minnesota. Now your thoughts. Oh, that's that's a lot, right? That's a lot. And Jared Bayless and a 20. They, they gave up a lot for Jimmy Butler yeah. and a second round pick. So Sixers as we'll yeah. take the, the break in the uh, the football broadcast here to, to talk some some Philly basketball. Yeah, but, you just uh, but we have you on, and like you said, <laughs> Brett Brown's daughter went to GA, so it's all relevant. <laughs> oh. As this ball is incomplete yeah. off the hands of Griffin Batchelor. It'll be interesting to see what they what they do there from a defensive standpoint, but Cove because they were using Covington pretty much as their lockdown guy. But um, that's a lot. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to see Sarge go. Yeah. Because I've always liked his game. I mean, he wasn't, hasn't been making the, as, as many shots as he normally would this year, but I thought he, he had a real good grasp on how to play the game. Gritty, too. Yeah. I like those kinds of players yeah. as a coach. Yeah. Now, Bayless, I think that's just a get rid of the yeah, contract. Yeah, exactly. So. Third and ten here. Did they also, a, was it also a first round pick? A second round. Second pick. round pick. Second okay. Round they, pick have a, well. they have a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. And second round picks are worth yeah. pretty much dirt in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. So it would lead me to believe that they're not done, they're not finished. Right. There, 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 there's something else. There's going to be some other chips that fall somewhere along the way. Interesting point you make that in the NBA you need to score points. You have to I, score. That that's been the case. I think in a lot of leagues, this GA is going to punt here on fourth down, and they cut it through the wind. It'll be down at the 44-yard line. 5.32 to go, 41-7. to Penn Charter's offense back out onto the field. Uh, there you see number seven in Aaron Mayon, who received that punt. But even at the NFL level, right, even at the professional football level, it seems that the leagues have shifted in a way to score more points, right? And I don't know if that has to do with fantasy football, fantasy basketball, the thing that you know, people are more involved, right, and have more interest when more points are being scored. Yeah. And I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but you do see that trend. I think it's more of the media. I think it's it's more of a, a situation where um, each of the, the professional sports are in competition with the others, and there's only so much air time, and there's only so many people that are going to use that their uh, free time to the ball to, is to loose participate here. And, and to watch. So it's... Uh, you know, people didn't come to see a, a coach uh, dazzle everybody with his defensive strategy. They came to see people getting up and down the floor, and that's what that's what the game has gone to in the NBA. Yeah, I guess it, it's come a long way since the days of no three-point line. And you have to remember, I mean, there's so many players in the NBA that have made the jump quickly into the NBA and professional ranks that they – they don't have the fundamentals yet. And so, uh, and it's hard at the professional level to teach them those fundamentals. That's why Coach Brand is such a good coach because that's what he tries to do. But he, he came from good stock with Coach Pop in uh, San Antonio. He certainly did as another ball is loose. As Penn Charter has fumbled twice here on this series, but they will retain. It'll be third and long. We're under five minutes to play. Five minutes of pretty much just a formality as Penn Charter is well on their way to a victory. 41 to 7 here in on GAPC Day. Long day for us here on Play by Play Sports Network. Big thanks to our crew for, for hanging tough through this wind and the cold. A handoff across. And it will we'll see some shuffling out of bounds here on the GA sideline. Matt Marshall is on the GA sideline and they're gonna finally let him escape. <laughs> they were just sharing where they were gonna go after That's the game. Right. That's all. Cantina Feliz down the street. I, I have a feeling that Delisandro's down by Penn Charter is probably going to be pretty busy today. <laughs> All right, since we have you on and you just brought up a <laughs> cheesesteak joint, what's your, what's your spot? Gino's, Pat's, Delisandro's, Tony Luke's. Well, you, you would, 
I, I couldn't I couldn't come to school on Monday if I didn't say Rich's Deli right down the street. There you go. Fourth down and Penn Charter will boot it away. Under three to play. It's punt off the right side of the foot. And we'll roll inside the 20. Keep going. Wind taking it inside the 10. And this wind is just ridiculous. It's still going here. Inside the five. They're going to down it at the one yard line as this ball is finally down. Man, just a, again, a really good indicator of how impactful this wind has been. I don't even think it's as as windy on the field as it is up here yeah. in the press box. <laughs> yeah. But but apparently that ball just <laughs> had a life of its own. Yep. Penn almost, Charter just willing it inside the five. Almost thought we were dealing with curling. You're right. Patriots starting at their own two yard line, the first and ten. 2.22 to go. And they'll just get some breathing room. Short run through the middle. So we've got a couple of minutes left. Jim, why don't you give us a, a little preview of, of GA basketball? What do we have to look forward to this year? Well, I think, um, you know, on a day like today with so many alum around, everybody's been asking me, you know, how's basketball going to be? And I will give them the stock answer that I give for for the last 30 years here at GA. And as long as I stay out of their way, we're going to be okay. <laughs> but we uh, we have some, we have a, we had a very young team last year, and uh, the good thing is that uh, they've, they've matured, they've worked hard in the off season, and I think we're really looking forward to a, a good season. Um, we've got some really talented young players, and uh, they, they love to play them, they love to play the game the right way. So I'm, lo I'm really looking forward to it. It's my 30th year here, and uh, I'm still having fun with it. That's the most important part. Timeout here as we had a big run from Trey Vance, who, uh, by the way, did go over 1,000 yards for the year. So big accomplishment for Trey Vance, who's had a phenomenal season for that, Germantown Academy. That is a great, that is a great a achievement for Trey. And also, I want, I want to uh, bring out something that uh, Coach Dent started as a tradition a couple years ago. Each game, each home game, uh, he picks a faculty coach to be with him. And for this game especially, he chose our director of security, Steve Dolan, who is, Steve is coming back off of some serious heart surgery, and, and he was the coach uh, of, of this game. And it's just a great tradition that Coach Dents has done. And we're glad to see Coach Dolan back out there. Good to hear. See the sign people from Penn Charters Faithful. They've been pretty happy with what they've seen. All these signs for Ed Say D. And now we've got a, a sack as Brittingham looks like he lost the exchange. So they'll go back a couple of yards out of the timeout. And those Penn Charter fans you see over there waiting to rush the field. Trey Vance, another big run up the left side. Flags go flying. Vance is flying inside the 40. It appeared that part Penn Charter had too many people on the field there. Yeah, so they but might that, decline yeah, they'll the penalty. decline that penalty, hopefully. Good news for, for GA, another year of... Yeah, legal substitution, okay. So a legal substitution, the call. Good news for GA, Jim, is that is that uh, 
Trey Vance will be back next year. Yes. You might not have the right tackle and left tackle to run behind, but uh, there's some good young good young players uh, on the, on that sideline that uh, will will get a chance and get an opportunity to play, and uh, you know, and there's some really good young players that are out there as a part of the team this year. So the future is bright. So first and ten for GA. Brittingham looking end zone, and he completes for a touchdown. Tayshawn Mack. Sixth touchdown of the year for Mack. And Germantown Academy has put another touchdown on the board. The score 41 to 13 with 36 seconds to go. He'll add another extra point. So GA scores a couple of times here in the second half, some good adjustments. Bit of a different game than we saw a couple of years ago here on this field. Well more points than, than that game as the extra point is good. And we'll have 36 seconds left. Well, Penn Charter will get the ball. Presumably they'll just kneel the ball a couple times and the game will be over. Yeah, you would think so. It's, a, it's been a great victory for them. Yeah, really, for Penn Charter, getting now 8-2. and two. We await to hear the result of the Malvern versus Springside CHA game. But the Springside Chestnut Hill at the uh, bottom, I guess you could call it, of the standings in the Interact. Yeah. It's probably going to be a Malvern win there, which would crown them champions. And Penn Charter would have to be content with a second play. They won't be, but they'll be content with a second place finish in the Interact. I mean, you talk about the Interact this year, Jim. Yeah. You've got Germantown Academy, Haverford, and Springside Chestnut Hill all at one and three in league, but all of the teams have above 500 records. Yeah. I mean, it's really strong football. Uh, it, uh, pe people underestimate the strength of the Interact in, in every sport. Um, you know, th there have been times when in basketball we, we've been we've been the better team in the league, and everybody in that in that league has been really good and beaten a lot of teams in other leagues that probably get a little bit more publicity that we do. But it, it's an incredible league. Onside kick attempt for GA, but Penn Charter is going to recover. And that's going to do it as the offense will come out to kneel the ball with 33 seconds GA left. Kick is recovered by Gavin Dvorsky. And especially when you go back on the topic of the league, but especially on the topic of the league, that a lot of the schools in the league are relatively small schools. And GA has about 500 kids in the upper school, but that's only about 250 boys. And so, uh, to, to compete in sports like football, lacrosse, where you need a lot of players, it's tough. And so when you're going up against some, some of the bigger public schools uh, and you get some wins, then you know you've got some really quality kids out there. So victory formation for Penn Charter, as Kyle Jones fittingly will put an end to this game as he nails it down. And that should do it. Good to see some sportsmanship on, sportsmanship on the field as the players shake hands. And we saw some, uh, some personal fouls come out. But it ends with respect at the end of the day between these two programs, these two communities. That's and the a way good it should battle. be. Yep. That's the way it should be. Jim, your final thoughts as we watch Penn Charter's students run out onto the field. I wanted to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, just, just want to congratulate both teams and all the kids that participated today. It's, uh, it's a great day at, at Germantown Academy and a great event. Yeah. But I want to thank you guys, and um, hopefully we get a chance to do this again. It would be fun, man. I, I would really appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. It was uh, it was a lot of fun to, to speak with you, get your per perspective on the game, and 
you definitely have a, a career in broadcasting. I know you're not going to be coaching <laughs> GA basketball for the rest of your life. So, you know, well, think about the next step, right? <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to figure that one out. <laughs> All right. Thank so, you, Simon. Yeah, thank you, Jim. And we will thank our crew as well. Kevin Fodinger, our director, doing a great job all day. John Black doing a great job. Allie Wenner doing a great job. Again, our crew fighting through this win, fighting through the cold. It's been a long day. We saw a girls soccer game early this morning, ended in a one-to-one -one tie. And this football game here ending in a 41-14 victory for Penn Charter. And that's going to do it as Penn Charter wins the competition cup. We will say so long here from Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining us here on Play by Play Sports Network, the final 41 to 14. Penn Charter over GA. See you next time, everyone.